All right, kill it everyone. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna close some other things. It's not open. All right. Um, cool. So welcome to week seven of our uh, term three. Uh, it's continuing on with that lockdown work. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more lessons this week. Um, there's gonna be three video lessons for you guys to do for content. Uh, we are now moving on to our final section, which is the calculations component of our thermochemistry. Um, basically, we have two more weeks of content uh, this week and next, and that will basically cover up everything with thermochemistry. So basically, by week nine, we will be done with all of the material for this. Um, and also, that'll be the end of uh, the chemistry content, too. So, Fungia today is I want us to review uh, the enthalpy material that you guys learned last year. Uh, and also, let's do some exploring of the different types of enthalpy reactions. Um, so just basically kind of getting you guys used to some of the vocabulary. Um, on our checklist today, we're looking at number eight, which is uh, properties associated with enthalpy and entropy. Um, we'll talk about entropy next week. Um, and then we're also looking at those equations we've talked about. So we have, if you guys can see, let me grab my little laser pointer. Um, we have these delta H's, and now these delta H's have little letters uh, behind them, uh, which are going to help us indicate what type of reaction we have. You guys have already seen the delta H's with vaporization, sublaration, and fusion. Uh, those are the phase change ones. So now we're going to be looking at uh, the C and the F, and then next week we'll talk about the uh, R one as well. Uh, here's a little joke. So it's time for the facts of life. It's time to give you guys the laws of thermodynamics. All right, so just some reminder from what you guys have done previously when we're talking about what is enthalpy. Enthalpy is referring to heat transfer of a chemical reaction. Um, you're going to see that in any chemical reaction that's occurring. Um, and basically, the chemical reactions are either going to take in heat or they're going to release heat. Um, remember that heat energy is really important because it allows... Um, us to have energy to break the bonds, or when the new bonds are being made, it will release that energy. So, as a refresher, exothermic reactions release energy to the surroundings. Uh, this uh, enthalpy value, the delta H, will be a negative number. That's your hint to when you uh, can see it. Uh, it will also feel hot, and that's because it's releasing that heat to the environment around it. Um, in this case, the energy that is required to, um, sorry, the energy that's released when new bonds are formed is greater than the energy required to break the bonds of the reactants. Um, the other thing that you guys will see potentially and have to draw again or analyze again are the um, potential energy uh, graphs. So keep in mind, you have the reactants. Uh, we put in energy to break all those bonds. Um, this is referring to the activation energy. Uh, sometimes you will see it there. Sometimes you'll just see it as a direct kind of correlation between reactants and products, and there's just a line going down. Um, and then the products here. The products have less energy than the reactants do, and that's because that energy has been released to the environment, and the difference or the distance between our reactants and our products is referring to the energy amount that is released. Um, so those new bonds that are formed release those energies, and the products, um, whatever is the product left now, has uh, less energy in comparison to the reactants. With an endothermic reaction, um, this one is absorbing energy from its surroundings. Um, this delta H is going to be a positive number. This will feel cold, and the reason why it feels cold is because it's taking away your heat energy to be used uh, to break bonds. Um, so there isn't any real sensation of cold. Cold is just the loss of heat. In this case, um, you will require, sorry, the energy that is required to break the bonds requires more energy than what will be released when the new bonds are formed in the products. Um, so another way to think about it again, looking at these graphs, is I have reactants, I input energy to break all those bonds, um, and that's actually requiring quite a bit of energy. This, again, refers to activation energy, but you could also see it just as a direct line sometimes. And then in my products, um, when products make bonds, we release energy, but they're not going to release energy in this case because I have to put so much in to break all the reactant bonds. 
And so this is then referring to the energy that's absorbed from the environment uh, to um, break those bonds. And the products now have more energy than their reactants. Um, so yeah, that's basically where the heat energy is going. It's now being stored in the products uh, in the form of chemical uh, energy. Cool. Um, other things to think about is what is a catalyst? So keep that in mind. Um, catalysts are just a way to alter the rate of reaction and they are not actively involved in the chemical reaction. Um, what they generally do is they lower the activation energy to make it easier for that chemical uh, pathway to occur because it's going to take the pathway um, with the least amount of energy required. Um, this could be doing really simple things like just providing a meeting place for the reactants. Um, cool. And here's another diagram that you guys might see, a nice little kind of reminder. It's just a distribution curve, um, and it's just trying to state, um, looking at it, um, basically particles and the probability that those prob particles will have enough kinetic energy for that reaction. So um, a small portion of that will have enough energy in the uncatalyzed reaction, but the moment I lower the activation energy, I now introduce another fraction of the reactants that now have enough energy to react. Cool. Now let's talk about some new vocabulary. So um, we're going to be talking about uh, standard enthalpy and we're going to be looking at two different uh, examples. The first one is the formation. So this is referred to as delta F, F for formation. And basically that's going to be the heat energy that we either absorb or release for one mole of a product that's formed from its um, leading elements. So basically the elements that make up that compound. Um, cool. If you have any uh, delta H for elements, then that's just going to be zero kilojoules because when you form elements, you only need the elements. So we're thinking in this case of compounds. So I have a list of um, different uh, compounds and we're going to go and do those equations. So here we go. And let me move that around. Cool. So formation, as I was saying earlier, uh, we are talking about in this case, um, taking my watch off. Right. Um, so we're talking about, in this case, delta FH when it comes to that. And in this case, what we always have to keep in mind is that the when we write the equations, you are setting it so the compound, which is going to be the product, is equal to um, one mole. And I'll show you what I mean when we start looking at those equations. Let me just fix that. All right. So say, for example, I have the delta, um, the enthalpy formation of uh, sodium chloride is what I want to do. So the equation for that and how it's going to work out, I'm going to start on this end so I can give myself plenty of room. Um, and basically, I'm forming one mole of sodium chloride. So that is uh, what sodium chloride is. Um, that has to be set to one mole, so everything else is in reference to it. Now, I know what's going to make up sodium chloride is going to be sodium and uh, chlorine gas. Now, this equation obviously is not balanced. And I, when I do go to balance it, I'm not going to be altering uh, the product side of the equation. This has to equal one. Um, so what that then means is that I have to put alter these guys and I will be using potentially fractions on this side as well. So sodium's fine, that's one and one, but the chlor ride coming from the chlorine is two in the molecule so I'm going to do a half. So in this instance um, you are allowed to use um, fractions so do kind of keep that in mind. All right I'll give you guys some more examples just to make sure you got it. So here's the formation of um, 
sulfuric acid. Again, start with the product side, H2SO4. That is going to be set to 1. I then create a list of everybody else, H2, sulfur, and oxygen. So everything is going in reference to um, what is in my product side. So hydrogen's fine, 2 and 2. Sulfur's fine, 1 and 1. Oxygen's 4. Oxygen's 2. So I'm putting a 2 in front to give me 4 oxygens on each side. All right, let's do methane. So CH4, again, set to 1. The things that make it up are uh, carbon and hydrogen. Uh, carbon, 1 and 1, that's fine. That's 4, that's 2. So I'm putting a 2 in front, so that way I have two hydrogens now. Cool. And then here's my last example. Again, we draw our ethanol, um, that's our product. And then I backtrack and I write down all the different components. So we had carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. I might need to give myself a little more space so I can write some coefficients in the front if I need to. I'll move carbon around too. Give them a little more space. All right, so when I am looking at this, I see carbons two, so I need to put a two in front of here. Um, hydrogen, I have five, six. Um, so that's a two, so I put a three in front because three times two is six. And then oxygen, I have two. In this case, I have one, so I'm doing a half for the oxygen. So that way I only have one oxygen. It looks kind of funky to do things with fractions, but um, you are allowed to do that now. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint and talk about the other type of reaction that we have. The other one, which is the delta C, is the standard enthalpy of combustion. Um, so basically burning a substance in oxygen. Again, when we're doing this, we have to set something equal to one, and what's being set equal to one is the substance that you are burning, and you are making the assumption you have unlimited oxygen, so you're going to get complete combustion. Um, when you burn that substance, you are then combining that uh, oxygen with the elemental components. So in this case, we see uh, methanol um, in the products. When you burn it, it's carbon dioxide, so the oxygen is binding with the carbon, and the oxygen is also binding with the hydrogen, making um, water. So again, let's have a look at some examples to get you guys ready for that. So in this case, we're dealing with delta C H, and so that's why paying attention to those little symbols are going to be really important because it tells you a lot about what you're supposed to be doing. And then when we write equations, uh, make sure whatever you're burning is 1. It's equal to 1 mole. Cool. So delta CH of CH4. So you see how in this case I have a C in front of there instead of an F. So that tells me we are combusting it instead of um, forming it. And that's going to change how I do the equation. So when I'm doing this equation, oh, I accidentally moved back. There we go. Um, I will start with the substance that I'm burning. CH4. Uh, no number needs to go in front because that should be one. I have to burn it in oxygen. Leave some space for the oxygen because that way you can put in your numbers. And then product wise, I have carbon and I have water. I'm trying to give myself enough space so that way if we need to put a coefficient, we can. Cool. All right. 
I suggest when you're trying to answer this, the first thing you balance are the products on the side when it comes to the elements of what you're burning. The last step will be to balance oxygen. So carbon's one, that's one. Hydrogen's four, hydrogen's two on the side. So I put a two in front. Now that I've done all that, I can then work and figure out, okay, how many oxygens do I need total? So I see one, two, three, four, because that two is applying to that. So since I have four oxygens and that's two, I just put a two in front. Cool. All right, let's see another example. Um, so in this case, we are working with sulfur. I just like to give you guys a couple of examples so that way you guys um, can see how to do it with multiple kind of things. Um, so in this case, we're just forming sulfur dioxide. Cool. All right, next one's hydrogen. What am I doing? S. It's supposed to be C's. Let's see of hydrogen, and what we're gonna get is hydrogen gas plus oxygen forms H2O. Again, we're looking to see um, is the, whatever I'm burning equal to one, and it is, and then that and that are matching, so two and two. I only have one oxygen on this side, so I'm only gonna do a half oxygen uh, for that combustion. All right, and then last one, let's do um, the ethanol. So C2H5OH plus O2. This one I want to show you because um, it's you have like you finally have something on the um, what's being combusted that has oxygen. So we can factor that in as one of the oxygens that we actually have. So uh, carbon dioxide and water are going to be my two products. Uh, that oxygen isn't going to combine with oxygen to make oxygen. Um, it's going to be used instead to combine with the carbon or the hydrogen. All right, let's check our balancing. So this is a two, so I'm going to put a two in front here. Uh, that's five, six, so I'm putting a three in front of here to get six hydrogens. Now let's check to see how many oxygens we need. Two times two is four, three times one is three, so I need seven. Um, I already have one that's being provided from the ethanol, so I only need six in this case from that oxygen. Um, if I didn't have that um, the oxygen here, we would again be using a fraction, and you can use, like I said, um, simplified or unsimplified fractions. So you can do seven over uh, two, or you can do uh, three and a half would also be fine. Um, we'll accept both. Anyway, I don't need to do that because in this case, if I only need three, or sorry, if I only need six, I only need three oxygens from there. Cool, and that's how you do those equations. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. All right, something that I wanna point out to you is that there can be equations where the combustion and the formation values are the same. Uh, the example that I have for you would be the um, combustion of hydrogen and the formation of water have the exact same equation. Uh, and when you go back and you do kind of the working and the math behind it, you would end up writing the exact same equ equation. Because in this case, this would be one, and so you would have two hydrogens and half of the oxygen. If I was burning hydrogen and I had H2, that is set to one, then you have one and a half oxygens to make the water. Um, they like this question a lot because they want to ask you basically why are the enthalpy values the same for both of these reactions and you basically can say they're exactly the same equation so they have the same reactants that are being broken, uh, reactants so the same bonds being broken and same products uh, that are going to be releasing energy when those bonds are made. Cool. So just please note that this equation stuff we're not using immediately. I wanted to kind of teach you guys the vocabulary. And since I was teaching you guys the vocabulary, I might as well show you the equations as well. Um, and it helps reinforce what the vocabulary is talking about. Um, you won't need it for the remainder of this week, 
but don't let it kind of fall to the side because we do need it for Hess's Law, which is next week. And it helps take off the load from next week if I can give you this vocabulary now. All right. The other reminder I want to point out to you guys, just so that way, um, in case it pops up, is that remember that everything from last year is fair game. You will be learning new calculations this year, but every so often I've seen them throw in a level two question uh, because they're trying to throw a curveball or because um, they don't have enough questions that year, so they're grabbing stuff from last year. So just as a reminder, um, there are two things you learned last year with the calculations. The first one was on the bond energy calculations. Remember, in this example, they gave you all the energies of the bonds and they asked you to work out the enthalpy. The other way they would have done that is they would have had one of those bonds be unknown. They give you the enthalpy instead. And then from that information, you do some algebra to figure out the unknown bond energy. Um, if... I, I would highly suggest that you do revise this material uh, before your end of year exams or before the mocks, just in case it pops up somewhere. Um, and there are SciPad pages to do that. This is SciPad pages 70 to 71. Um, I wouldn't put it on high priority. I would say it's more important to learn the new material, but um, it is worthwhile to look at it just in case. Uh, the second thing you learned was the enthalpy calculations. Remember, that was the one where I've given you grams of a reactant or product and I ask you how much energy was released, or you go in reverse. I say, here's the amount of energy. Um, what's the amount of product that we've formed or how much of the reactant do I need for that? So do keep in mind those old school um, questions from last year. Um, I have definitely seen that first one, um, this one here pop up on a past exam. So uh, it is worthwhile just having a refresher. And uh, for the second type of energy calculations, uh, there's a page in the side pad uh, 78 that will um, cover that. All right, Kapai, really good work again today. Um, so today we just reviewed the enthalpy vocabulary and we also explored the different types of enthalpy reactions. We added basically the combustion and the formation um, reactions. Uh, Follow-up work then is do lesson number 13, enthalpy vocab, um, and make sure you're, or sorry, and on that website, there's always the recommended task there that could help. Um, Make sure that you are giving me evidence of the work. So insert images or type up your answers in that uh, Google Doc. Um, but that is our first lesson for uh, this week. Um, also, a reminder, if you're in my class, can you please do your uh, week seven weekly uh, check-in? Um, same standard questions as always. Um, and then the random question for this week is, what's your favorite smell? All right.